Bonjour Lil Kulhat, Oa Veramenta Piacir Linen Sapa Wek, President von der Leyen, dear Ursula, distinguished guests and dear friends. Welcome to this wonderful school on this beautiful island of villages. I can think of no more fitting occasion for the first ever visit to Gozo by a President of the European Commission. A few good days ago, at the United Nations General Assembly, I set out my mission to get the future right. I spoke of how we need to take the right decisions to be on top of the challenges ahead, answering those challenges. This new school is indeed a concrete example of owning the future, of turning challenges into opportunities through leadership. When the pandemic hit us way back in 2020, Malta and Gozo were hit harder than most. When with tourism at a standstill, our islands, which usually welcome so many tourists, were particularly impacted. That's why when President von der Leyen proposed the Recovery and Resilience Facility, Malta was engaged from the start. Because Malta shares with the President the deep belief that only by committing to fully embracing the coming green and digital transitions will we be able to truly build back better. So, I was delighted when the Commission agreed to Malta's plans and even more delighted still when on your last visit to our country you had described Malta's recovery plan as one of the greenest which any member state had submitted. That delight continues today here in Gozo as we visit pupils and educators that have commenced only a few days ago this scholastic year in new classes with new facilities. We are delivering a new school built on the same footprint on which the previous one was built because we believe that our land use policy is an integral part of our sustainability policy. Utilizing the next gen EU funds to deliver real practical benefit to all God citizens. The figures are also very impressive. Overall, Malta is benefiting from more than 300 million euro to speed up our economic growth. Over half of that is supporting our climate objectives and a quarter our digital transformation. But these fine sounding games only matter if they are translated into tangible projects on the ground across our communities. Projects that equip local people with the skills of the future, that use the green technology of the future and build our economic capacity for the future. Nadur School represents and symbolizes such a project. Utilizing over 6 million euro, 6.3 million euro of next gen EU investment to deliver new facilities to enhance the education of the next generation of Godzitten students. Only by providing the best education to our pupils can we promote social mobility, which in turn creates more peaceful and equal societies. This project will have a new dance studio, a music room, a literacy room, and also an art studio, all built in a sustainable manner. Utilizing the latest energy efficient technology to deliver a carbon neutral building, a win for pupils, a win also for the environment, a win for Gozo and Malta. I would here like to pay tribute to the roles of Education Minister Clifton Grima, Chris Bonnet, Parliamentary Secretary responsible for European funds, and also Neville Young, thank you, Neville, who is the Chief Officer of the Foundation for Tomorrow Schools, for delivering such an amazing project in a timely manner. President, dear Ursula, I know you are aware of the dangers of isolation for the more remote parts of Europe. Like me, you agree that connectivity is key to ensuring that geography isn't a barrier to economic success. My government is fully determined that Gozo's location should be turned 
into a positive. Gozo will never be left behind and will never play second fiddle. That's why my government has already increased by a quarter Gozo's share of the long-term EU funds allocated to our nation. I say to all God citizens, we shall ensure that Gozo will always get its fair share. To meet the green, target, the green targets at the very heart of our recovery plan, that's why we've committed to making Gozo the first carbon neutral zone in our islands, delivering visible benefits and improving everyday life. Like the green transport hub at Shauki, only a, few, a short distance away from here, designed to enhance connectivity for God's citizens by reducing congestion at the vital Imjar Harbour with sustainability at its core, electric buses free to use as is all our public transport connecting passengers to the harbour, transforming a site there contaminated with illegally dumped material into a green roof. That's it. Gozo here again proudly showing the way. Gozo may very well be a small island, but its people are extremely hardworking. With Clint Camilleri as Minister for Gozo, Gozo enjoys an energetic champion in my government focused on delivering where it matters to enhancing people's well-being and prosperity. Dear Ursula, thank you for finding the time to visit Gozo, and I am very proud to share with you these projects observing the impact of our shared commitment to building green growth. It is that agenda of green growth alongside other vital issues such as migration that will be central to the discussions and decisions at the Mad9 meeting which Malta will be hosting later on today. Malta and the EU working together, delivering a difference, driving the change our islands need, addressing the challenges, getting our nation ready for tomorrow, in short, getting the future right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prime Minister, dear Robert. Ministers, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear students, it's a wonderful opportunity and many, many thanks for the warm welcome to be here in Gozo and to visit the Nadur Primary School. First of all, after you showed me the classrooms and the work you're doing, I want to pay tribute, to pay tribute to the teachers and the staff here at the school and of course to the students for the great work that is being done here. You could just feel it. It's tangible that there's a very good atmosphere and it's heartwarming and wonderful to see that you're working with the children here, basically paving their way into the future. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart for this outstanding work teachers in general are doing. Thank you very much for that. The school is indeed brand new. Although the whole building has been preserved, the historic building, it has been completely renovated with funds from Next Generation EU. And I'm very glad to see that it is now highly energy efficient. It has spacious classrooms. It has a better air quality. The air condition is powered by the school's own solar panels. That's smart. You have sun in abundance, you can use it. And we could see the new digital equipment. So that was amazing also to see how modern and digitized the school now is. The children looked very much at ease and as I said, it's heartwarming to see that. The environment plays a big role, how you're going into life in your school and how the teaching is successful. Now this indeed has been financed under Next Generation EU and this is a great project for the islands of Malta and Gozo, and I know you have many more projects like this in the pipeline. Next Generation EU, our investment plan, is investing 330 million euros here in Malta and in Gozo, 
And indeed, you have chosen to dedicate almost 70% of this investment to climate objectives. This is way more than the European average. That's excellent. And I really want to thank you for that. You are among the first countries to increase the share of renewables in your energy mix. And renewable energy is homegrown. It gives you independence. As I said, you have the resources in abundance, that sun and wind. So this will help strengthen the electricity grid here. And this is so important, especially considering the power cuts that were here in the summer. You told me about it and where we want to work on together that this does not happen anymore. And one of the ingredients for a solution is to indeed strengthen the renewable energy system. So Malta needs basically to combine its strong growth, that's good, with sustainable use of its natural resources, that's good too. And to combine and reconcile both, that's our common endeavor and task. I know it's a challenge, but I'm also here today to tell you that Europe is at your side and uh, all along the road. I was in Malta two years ago to launch the Recovery and Resilience Plan, and it's good to see already two years later the results of the work that we've started back then, because this is just the beginning. We will continue working on other great projects, so there's lot, lots of good projects in the pipeline. Being here in Gozo is also a great way to start the summit of the MET9. And thank you very much for the invitation. Throughout history, Malta has played a strategic role in the Mediterranean region. Malta, with its unique cultural heritage, it's amazing to see here, and we are way too short here to take in all the amazing treasures you have here. And with your cultural heritage, you project our European values in the Mediterranean. And it represents all the opportunities for trade and investment in renewable energy that the Mediterranean had, has to offer. At the summit, we will have important discussions on the future of the Mediterranean region, and there is no better place to have these discussions than here, at the crossroad of Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. So thank you very much again for the very warm welcome and many thanks for the opportunity to visit this school. Many thanks again to the staff and the teachers, and many thanks for the children to show all that. Thank you. Well done.